For those of you who own a Wally tractor, you'll know that we offer on it two alignment schemes, um, Lofgren or Bearwald. <clears throat> and many of you have asked, uh, particularly if you've got Rega tone arms or some, other, some of the other British tone arms, why don't we use Stevenson alignment? And so I'm going to go into the answer for why we do not. One of the earliest videos that we did at WAM Engineering was to lay out a study that we performed uh, involving 1,300 records in which we were measuring um, what's the innermost radius that the records were cut to. And so we measured 1,300 records and documented that innermost radius by year of production and genre. And we found that <clears throat> uh, the number of records that exceeded the IEC minimum of 60.325 millimeters was less than, I think it was somewhere around less than 3.7% of the entire, um, uh, the entire uh, population of records that we were studying. Well, what does that mean? And what does that mean for a relationship with the Stevenson alignment and why we don't use it? Stevenson alignment weighs extra heavily on favoring the innermost grooves, closer to 60 millimeters. And in that alignment scheme, as it puts more emphasis on those innermost grooves, it does so at the expense of all the rest of the record um, in terms of um, uh, trekking angle error. So if you're using Stevenson alignment, then less than 4% of your records will even benefit from that reduced trekking angle error at the innermost area of the groove. And all the rest of your records will sl suffer slightly because of it. So we decided we're not going to use this. Um, we're not going to use Stevenson at all. Um, we don't see any good statistical claim that it's merited. And besides, what most people refer to as clearly audible inner groove distortion isn't actually directly related to the setup of the cartridge. It's almost always, almost entirely related to the tone arm's horizontal torque forces being out of control. I did another video on this, please watch that. Like in that video, I'm stating that much of what is being claimed to be the consequence of not using one geometry over another geometry can't be blamed on those geometries at all. It's almost always blamed on the tone arm, but unless you measure the horizontal torque forces and static friction in that tone arm, you won't know. You could be forgiven for thinking that Cartridge alignment is a direct consequence of what we hear and call uh, inner groove distortion. Why? Because tracking angle error will increase the probability of audible distortion and mistracking and sibilance, but it doesn't cause it to happen. It only increases the probability. This was the subject of a, a study done and published in the IEC uh, back in the 19, oh, early 1970s. I think it's really important, however, to note that any argument over whether one alignment scheme is better than another, or whether 12-inch arms are better than 9-inch arms for their decreased uh, tracking angle error, or even pivoted arms versus linear trackers, that these arguments really lack a perspective and prioritization. I'm going to go into this lack of perspective and prioritization of controlling various errors involved in mechanical transcription in another video. But it, it's tied to this very question of why we're not using Stevenson. So look for that video soon where we discuss the trade-offs and the similarities between aiming for reduced horizontal tracking error versus vertical tracking error. That's it. Until next week on our next soundbite video, see ya.